Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a unique link to a thing that you've created in your database and share it with users, regardless if they have an account in your app or not. And this is powerful because now you can start sharing pages with people who aren't necessarily uh, current users in your, in your app. And as a bonus, at the end of the video here, I'm going to show you how you can use those links within the, the menu, the drop-down menu, uh, or you can have it as a, as a link within a repeating group, for instance. Um, but first, please subscribe to my channel so you get notified of upcoming videos. And if you like this video, uh, leave a chat below uh, and give me a thumbs up because I, I do appreciate that. So let's go and do a quick demo here. So in this um, uh, unique link for sharing of things, this is powerful for sharing um, either pages that you may have in your app for an automotive uh, app or a real estate app where you want to share links for specific vehicles or properties. In this demo here, I'm going to be using a blog post as an example. So in your app, you may be creating blog posts and want to share those with not only users in your app, but also share it with users who don't have an account in your app. So I'm just, I've got a very simple uh, blog creation here. Uh, so let's say blog test number one. And then this is blog number one. I'm gonna create that. And then uh, I've got this repeating group, which we'll get into a design in the moment. And when I click on that, it is going to open up this blog page. And now you'll see up at the top here, it says blog test number one or dash one. Uh, so what we're doing here in this design is we're using slugs. And basically what slugs allow you to do is to customize the URL. So you can use words, like in this example here, I'm using the name of the blog title, so blog test one. Uh, instead of what the default from Bubble is to uh, use their unique ID. So if I go in here and take a look at this, so the unique ID, typically what you would see if you're not using slugs is in the link here you would see that unique ID showing up here. So in this design, in this example, I'm gonna show you how to use a slug instead. And basically that is the demo part of it. Let's get into the design. So for this, I'm gonna go back to my index page where I've got a small section here to create a blog post. Uh, again, this is very basic. Uh, I'm not here to show you how to create a blog post in your app, but basically how to show to create a unique link of a thing, and the thing being a blog post, so you can share it with your users. I have this input field here uh, to get the blog title. And just to show you how to get that, it's an input here. Simple input field, and then you'll see it says blog title here. The default is, is type here. Um, that's all I did was just type in blog title. And, that, and that's all I did for the input field. Here I've got the rich text input. And that's down at the bottom, rich text input. And I'll provide a link to, I have a video on how to use the, the rich text uh, input. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it in this video. I will provide that link for, for how to use the um, rich text editor, though. And then over here, what I have is a repeating group. And in there, the type of content is blog. So that's my thing. And in your app, it could be, again, an automotive app. It could be vehicle. Uh, for a real estate app, it could be uh, properties, for instance. And all I'm doing here for the repeating group is just doing a search, no constraints. And then I have the created date um, in descending order. And that's all I have for setting up the repeating group. Within the repeating group, I have a link. And on there, it's basically the current cell's blog title. 
The link destination is going to be an internal page, and that page is blog. So I'm just going to jump over here. I'm currently on index, and blog is the page that I'm going to send users to. And then the data to send is going to be the current cells blog. So let me just show you how to get that link. And the link right here. And then insert dynamic data, current cells blog, and then blog title. Again, I'm going to go to an internal page for this. The destination is going to be blog, but I'm going to show, I'm going to leave it for index for a moment because I want to show you an important uh, aspect of this, of this design. The data to send is going to be the current cells blog, and then it's going to be, okay, so this is the issue. Blog cells, certain current cells blog, right? Now, if I put it to blog here, it's, it's fine. And the reason that is, is because the blog page that I have, its data type is, is blog. So if I click over here for index page, I don't have any type of content, but I could put it as, as user, but that, as you see, messes up some other things I already have set up in my demo page here. So basically, back to current sales blog and setting this up as blog. I'm just gonna jump over here to the blog page. And you can see, just double click, get this pop up here. Type of data, type of content is blog, okay? So now, just for a moment, I'm going to change this back to user, and you'll see I get I have issues here. If I go back to my index page, go back down. Now this is an issue, but if I go and change this to current sales user, it's fine because I am sending current user data to the blog page, which I just temporarily set up to be of type user. Okay, I'm just going you know, to do a couple of backs here, set this back up so this is of type blog again, and go back to my index page. Okay, so I wanted to walk through that because that is an important thing I see with, with uh, developers. Um, the sending of the correct type of data can, can trip you up sometimes, so I just wanted to do a quick uh, walk through on that. It's important to set it up as the current, uh, the same data type. Now I'm going to delete that. Now I'm going to jump over to data so you can see the data structure. And for this, it's real simple. Uh, the, the blog is of blog content is text, and the blog title is text for that. Let me just kind of quickly walk you through how to create this. So it's a new data type. I'm just going to call it blog2. I create that. Bubble automatically pushes this uh, or shows it over here. Blog title of type text. And that's basically it. Uh, the content is blog content, the same uh, type text. I'm just going to go back up here and delete that. And that's basically uh, the, the data structure for this. Again, I'm not here to show you how to create the data structure for your blog post. You may have some other items into it. I'm really here to show you how to create the uh, and share a unique link. So the next item on here is the button for creating the post. So simple button right here. Delete that. And go to the workflow for this. First thing we're going to do is create a blog. And the blog content is that rich text inputs uh, content uh, value. And then the blog title is that other input uh, for the blog title's value. The next step for this is to create the slug for it. So the thing to change is going to be the result from step one. And in step one, we're creating the blog. And then we're going to uh, use the slug, slug, which is basically that input blog title value. So again, in your blog or, or whatever you're, you're using in, uh, for a slug, you could have some other um, input field for that. 
For the simple example, I'm just using the blog title as my slug. And then afterwards, I reset the group so that all of the inputs, so basically my blog title input, rich text editor is all reset um, for the next blog to be created. And that's basically it. Uh, these three steps here to set up the um, the blog post and the slug for it. I'm going to jump down to the app data here. And then you can see, uh, again, blog content, blog title. And this is where the slug shows up here in the database. OK. And that is basically all there is that you need to do for setting up um, the, the link. So let me just do a refresh here. And I'm able to do a, create another one. So blog test number, number two, blog number two, and submit. And you see in the repeating group here, it automatically adds it. I'm going to click on this, and it is going to bring me to blog number two. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, there's no this, there's nobody logged into the account. So you could basically share this link here with anyone that you wanted to, regardless if they have an account in your app or, or not. Now, I also mentioned at the beginning of uh, some bonus information, so I want to walk through that now with you to show some uh, something that may be of value. Now, on my drop down here, I have this blog post or blog link, and you see when I go to that blog page, okay, it's showing multiple blogs, both of those that I just created. Now I'm going to go back to home and when I come down here and I click on either one of these, but I'll click number two, you see it's blog test two and it only shows blog test number two. So this may be important for you in your, in your app such that you may have a menu item here that shows again properties and when you click on it, it's going to show you all of the properties that you want to show your users. However, if you want to go and email uh, distribution of a particular posting, a particular property, a particular vehicle, you can send them this link here, and you'll, they'll just get that posting. And the way to set that up is back over here. I'm going to go to blog. Now, I basically have repeating group here and a text field. I'm going to hide the text field for a moment. So in the repeating group, I have a conditional and it says get path from page URL is not empty. Make this element, the repeating group, visible. And basically what this is, is saying is that um, if it's not empty, if the URL doesn't have information, then I want to make this visible. Now if it, let me hide this, and if it is empty, I'm sorry, if it is not empty, then I want to show the text for that specific posting. In this case, a blog post. In your app, it may be uh, an automotive listing or a property listing. So when it's not empty, because that's going to mean, I'm just going to come up here. Um, Let's see which one of these windows. Let me just do this here. Okay, so in this one, it's got information in the URL blog post too. So I want to show that text field. Okay. And then when there is no information in the URL, it's empty, I want to show this repeating group, which is basically a simple search for all the blogs, or again, could be all auto automotive or all property listings that you have. So I wanted to walk through that with you so you could see that there is a way to set up, it's still the blog page, but in some instances, it's going to show you a unique blog or automobile or property. And in other instances, it's gonna show you um, all of them. Um, it's basically how you wanna set it up. 
So hopefully that was helpful. If you do like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Thank you.